Hello, it's Easter Sunday and it's all about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the question I'm asking today is, did Jesus really rise again? First, I'm going to read you a few verses from the Bible found in the first of Paul's letters to the Corinthian Christians in chapter 15. He writes, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, then to the twelve, the twelve disciples. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive. The core of the Christian message is the death of Jesus Christ for our sins, his burial and his resurrection on the third day. As Paul says further on in the section I read from, there is no Christianity without the resurrection. But the question is, have the billions of Christians who have lived and died over the last 2000 years been deluded? Did Jesus really rise again? I just want to select three out of many strange happenings, all of which are explained most satisfactorily by the resurrection. First one is the empty tomb. Some crazy theories have been put forward as to why Jesus' tomb was empty on the third day after his death on the cross. One I read recently was that he wasn't buried in that tomb at all. His body was put in a common grave. I'm not sure how any intelligent person could come up with such a theory when it's clear that the authorities had insisted on making the tomb secure by sealing the stone and installing soldiers to guard it. Why would they do that? And of course there was the one proposed when the news first got out that Jesus was alive. The story was spread around that despite the sealed stone and the guard, quote, the disciples came by night and stole him away, unquote. Think about it. Disciples who were scared for their lives devastated that their master, their teacher, had died. Disciples who never believed that he would rise again had somehow crept past the soldiers, moved the stone, taken his body and hidden it and pretended he had risen. What is the only real answer to the empty tomb? It's this, simply that Jesus is risen. He is alive. The second strange happening, the many people who claim to have seen Jesus. I read to you about a number of people to whom he said to have appeared. All of them were people who had not expected Jesus to rise again. They didn't even believe when friends who saw him first told them they had seen him. When the ten disciples told Thomas they'd seen him, he wouldn't believe. Uh, they all, in fact, they all took a lot of convincing. But Paul also tells us in those verses that he appeared to more than 500 people at once. I've heard people suggest these were hallucinations. But could any clear thinking person suggest that more than 500 people could experience the same hallucination at the same time? And Paul seems to anticipate the scepticism of his readers by saying most of those 500 plus people are still alive. You can ask them, he's saying. What's the only real answer to these multiple appearances? Jesus is risen. He is alive. The third strange happening, the transforming of the disciples from a timid group hiding in an upper room scared for their lives into a team of bold preachers totally willing to yield their lives for Christ as many of them did eventually. What made the difference? The clue is in the content of their preaching. The resurrection was always central to it. It was the conviction they had that Christ was risen, as well, of course, as the power of the Holy Spirit who came to indwell them, that gave them courage to preach. So the only reasonable answer to why they had such boldness is that Jesus is risen. He is alive. They really did see him. There are so many other things, but these three are enough to convince me that Christ is risen, that Jesus is alive. He is the Lord. But that raises a question. What difference does it make to us in 2022? The fact that Jesus is alive establishes at least three things. Number one, he's the Son of God. The Bible says he was declared to be the Son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead. 
Number two, he's the saviour of sinners. As the Holy Son of God with no sin of his own, he was both able and willing to pay the price that all our wrongs demand from a holy God. As the verse I read earlier said, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Number three, he will be the judge. Yes, there's a judgment day coming and the wrongs in your life, if not forgiven, will condemn you to hell. Listen again to the Bible, the words of one of Paul's sermons. God has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, that's Jesus. And of this he's given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. On the basis of those three things, the fact that Jesus is the Son of God, the fact that he's the Saviour of sinners, the fact that he will be the judge, on the basis of those three things, I'll borrow again words from that sermon of Paul's. God commands all people everywhere to repent. That is, to have a change of heart about themselves, about God and about Christ, have an about turn. On this Easter Sunday 2022, there's forgiveness, peace with God, a new life, eternal life, all available as a gift from God for you through the risen living Saviour, Jesus Christ. Will you today repent of the wrongs in your life and trust yourself to Christ to be your Saviour and Lord? Thanks for watching and God bless you at this Easter time.